Hello everybody, this is Chris from CSS Tricks with video screencast number 34. This week we're going to be talking about implementing Google Maps onto your website. So you probably have all seen Google Maps before. It's a nice interface. Maybe I'll just bring it up really quick. We'll go to maps.google.com. And <clears throat> so you've all seen these before. These are really nice maps that you can drag around, you can zoom in on, you can put down points, you can get directions and all this stuff. Uh, but this is on Google's website. They offer an API service for their maps uh, that will allow you to embed these nice maps on your own website. So you don't have to ship people off. You can keep your branding and all that and still have all the usefulness of Google Maps. So I have uh, just a fake little website I threw up just for this. Jimbo's Golden Nuggets. Totally fake place. I have no idea what that is. I'm thinking a casino, maybe one of those places out in the desert where you can like shift sand and find little gold flakes and stuff. I don't know, but it's like, let's say there's a place called Jimbo's Golden Nuggets and he's got a site on his place for a map because it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, you know, and he needs people to be able to find this place. So you want to offer up a map of some kind so it becomes obvious where this place is. So why not use a Google map, a really nice thing that people can, you know, just pinpoint it on there, drag around, find their own high house, and just use all the goodies that are part of Google Maps right on Jimbo's own site. So what I want to do is, is drop a, a, a Google Map right on here if we can. We're going to go through the process of doing that and some options and customization and getting it to look and behave how we want it to. So depending on your skill level, could be pretty easy, but it's not, you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world. We covered Google Search before. It's probably a little, ultimately a little bit more complicated than that. So uh, before we get started super quick, I want to mention our sponsor, Vertical Response at verticalresponse.com. Um, this is my account, but there's a, they offer a free account that, you know, who they are, they're, uh, they're an email sending service. They do a couple other things too, which we'll, uh, bring up in future podcasts briefly, but kind of their meat and potatoes is sending out HTML email, email marketing newsletters, stuff like that. A few podcasts ago we did, we created an HTML email, you remember that? So you could use this service to send that and you'd be smart to do so because there's all these things like the chances of that email getting delivered are a lot higher. You can do all the tracking, see how many people opened it, that type of thing. And it just makes it easier to manage. Using an email service is like just, well, it's not even a question. If I'm sending an, out a, a newsletter to a mass list, I'm using a service use vertical response they're good that way so I'm logged into my account and I just wanted to show you what it kinda of feels like to use this service I just went ahead and clicked on the emails tab and I'm gonna start a new email so we'll give it a name as soon as this pops up here and what I wanted to show you is that the the four different types of ways that you can create emails within vertical response so there's a wizard that's the first way it's gonna walk you through this the, the step of creating an email it's gonna ask you questions about how it designs and what the text you want and how you want it to behave so that's like if you're a complete novice you can use the wizard step by step and it'll walk you through creating an email uh, a step up from that is the canvas where you can you can use this canvas technique and it's gonna give you this really full featured rich text editor for actually designing and creating the HTML email there's also a bunch of templates in here so you can pop open a template and use the rich text editor to alter that template so that's kind of the next step up from the wizard then there's what a, a lot of you guys might be interested in is you know if you already have this thing built just use the freeform HTML option. Let's see. I have a, a email I was just working on briefly today. Um, looks like this, you know, a bunch of tables and inline styling like we covered from before. I'm just going to copy all that stuff, open up, the, use the, the freeform HTML, HTML method here, and I'll just paste it in. There's no text editor. It's basically just paste in your HTML type of thing. Uh, I already have one called test, so... I'm not going to take too much longer on this. I just wanted to show you how the, there are all the different types of ways that vertical response can help you with this email stuff. And I'll just hit quick preview, and it's going to show me that's that's my email. There it is right there. So 
vertical response can send ones that you create completely from scratch outside of vertical response as well. So definitely check them out. They are a uh, HTML email newsletter send in service vertical response. So let's get into this Google Maps API thing. Um, this is the home page for the Google Maps API. It's at code.google.com slash APIs slash maps. I'll have links to all this stuff on the actual video page. You know, I'm doing this kind of show notes -y kind of thing now, and I'll have links to all this stuff. But anyway, if you're going to embed a Google Maps map on your website, you need an API key to do it. And those API keys are linked to domain names. So where do I start? Sign up for a Google API key. Click that. There's a bunch of, of stuff you should read here. There's no limit on page views, but you know if you're expecting a you know a half million a day, you should contact us. That kind of stuff. Read through the terms of use, accept them if you will, and then tell it what your website is. We are going to build this thing right on css-tricks.com. So I'm going to do that and hit generate an API key. And it gives you this big long key. It gives you, uh, uh, you know, the URL that you signed up for, and it says, "Here's an example web page to get you started on your mapping glory." So you could literally copy this thing, paste it into a an in, uh, HTML file, and navigate to it on the web, and you'll see a Google Maps embedded on that site. Very cool. This will only work on the domain, this domain that I gave it. If I try to do this on my local machine. The map's not going to pop up because the API key is invalid because it's not the right domain name. So I need to build this thing live on CSS Tricks, so that's what we are going to do. So here's Coda. I've logged into CSS Tricks and made a folder in examples, and I called it Google Maps, which will probably be where this is, so you'll be able to see this too in the show notes. And I have a you know typical project file that we always have, an index file. Uh, style.css file and then just a couple of images that we use to build this page and if you might have caught a glimpse of it a minute ago it's oh well, what we were talking about Jimbo's golden nuggets and this is where we hope to to get that map in there so let's get started doing it all right so one thing we for sure need to snag out of here we're not going to grab all of this but we're going to grab out for sure the script tag with that is has our API key embedded in it and get that up into the head section of our project here so so that you know it'll work on this website very important and a lot of functions come in with this too that that we can use on Google Maps so the second thing we need to do is oh I'm not supposed to see that yet is uh, <clears throat> is set up a div that's going to be what our CSS can target to you know set up and style and show where and, and control the positioning where this map's going to end up and that the JavaScript can target to fill in the map here. So we're going to have a div with an ID of map. And we're going to want to position this thing. So I'm going to, you know, spare you the, the boring details here and just tell you that we're going to use a little, uh, we're going to set a width and a height and, and uh, you know, some absolute positioning and get, get this, uh, map where we want it to be, I'll open up the style.css file and I'll paste it in a div with an ID of map or anything with an ID of map, some width, height, top and left value and we'll say position. We'll keep it clean. Position absolute. <clears throat> so we'll save that so our map DV, our, our map div is, is going to be in the right place just how we want it to. Um, now let's jump back over to this index file. So we have the script file in there that's gonna that 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 sets up Google Maps, but it's not gonna do anything yet. I mean, we have to write functions for this all ourselves. I mean, there's very little kind of copy and paste functionality here. So we're gonna write a function called load. Here, let me grab all of this. We need to write a JavaScript function, and we're gonna call it load. It's within, you know, script tags, regular JavaScript script tags. And the first thing in there is an if-else thing. And uh, uh, there's a function in here that it calls right away called if G browser is compatible, which, you know, comes in from Google Maps. And it's just a little thing to, to, to determine if the browser is capable of, of showing Google Maps or not. And if it's not, it says 
sorry, the Google Maps API is not compatible with for this browser. So mostly, you know, the modern browsers are, I don't, I don't even have an example of a browser that can't do it. Netscape 4, something like that, not going to happen. So it'll just display an alert instead. But usually it's going to fire off whatever's in here. So we need to uh, uh, do all the magic of loading this map in there. So what do we want to do? I think the, the meat of calling it is a function called gmap2. So there's going to be a lot more in here, but I think this is the, the gist of it is that we need a, you know, we're going to set up a variable called map and it makes a new gmap2 and it gets an element by id map. So it's going to put this uh, map within uh, the div with an id of map. So we'll save it and see how we did there. There's a lot more to it than that. This might not even work. Just kind of an experiment. Let's pop it open. Oops. <clears throat> and reload. And in fact, it didn't work, did it? There's going to be more to it. I'm not sure that just that command is going to be able to do it. So let's start putting in some extra stuff and, and thinking ahead a little bit. Um... Beyond just inserting the map on the page, you know that Google Maps has a couple things that get added to maps that are, are, are you know, beyond it has that terrain view where you can see, you know, the satellite view and it has like that hybrid view where you can see streets and all that stuff and that stuff at the same time. And it has zoom in, it has zoom out, and uh, there's a variety of other things too. But on a map of this size, I'm thinking it's going to be nice, you know, without doing anything, you can still drag it around and stuff. But it'll be nice to have a little zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, as well as those, 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 you know, regular map view, hybrid view, all that stuff. So we're going to add a couple of uh, statements in here to, to that map that says, use this add control function you say new g small map control there's also a large map control but it happens to be a little too big that's the one where you have the slider bar and you can go up and down to zoom in this just has a little plus button a little minus button so that's small map control then the map type control is the thing that with the hybrid view and street view and all that stuff so uh and then this is a pretty important one beyond the controls you say set the center and that's going to be i mean this is vital if you don't if you don't include this at all i don't even know where it centers that might have been the problem actually but it takes a uh, latitude and longitude coordinates and that's where it centers this map on and then this third number is how far zoomed in you want to be so pretty important stuff there we're going to cover how you get those latitude and longitude numbers later but uh, uh, very important of where you want this map to start out and you know for 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 Jim Bob's golden nuggets we're gonna put him somewhere in the Portland area so this is gonna be pretty important <clears throat> and save that okay and then we're gonna then we're gonna be talking about uh, creating actually some markers on that page and some stuff we can do there but for, let's 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 shift reload here and see how we're doing for some reason, it's not putting a map on our page. We gotta figure out what's going on there. There's map. Oh yeah, obviously we need to call this load. I deleted this before, and then I forgot to add it back in because it was a little premature there. We need to call this load function when the body of the page loads. That's how this is gonna go down. So an onload call this thing, and then and then unload it when it ends. We don't have to write that script. That kind of comes. Bundled. Let's see if that did the trick. Come on now. There we go. So there's our map placed right where we want it to be. And you know, it happened to pop in right perfect there because of because of that CSS I set up. And so I didn't walk you all through that, but I, I just popped open Firebug here. I can select map, and this is in the CSS exactly exactly where I want it to. You know, I set the height, and we can we can play around with this stuff and say whoa that we want to nudge that up a little bit or or nudge to the left a little bit we can play with that stuff in firefox and or in firebug and get it all perfect but i had already done that stuff so there's our map and those two controls that i was talking about here's the three buttons that comes with the uh, with the statement gmap type control and then this is the uh, the the zoom control or whatever, so you can zoom in and out. And it happened to already have the latitude and longitude for Portland. It won't by default, but I'll show you how to get those in just a second. Actually, why don't we just do it right now? That's what we're talking about. I just actually just Googled this. I Googled, like, you know, find lat longe or something, and this one seemed to work just fine. 
Um, I'll include a note to it in the show notes, of course, but I just typed in center the map around Portland, Oregon. That's all I had to do. And, and there it is right there. So <clears throat> I confirmed that it works with Google Maps and the latitude is right underneath the map and the longitude there. I just copy and pasted those values and chucked them right in there. So that's how that works. Uh, like I said, I'll include a note to that in the show notes, but I think you can get a little as specific as you want to here about where those things are going to be. So here's our <clears throat> site again, and it's important. Let's say I want to zoom out. That's a little too zoomed in for me. I believe that it is, well, let's just test it out. Let's make, let's make this like seven and save it and reload the page again. We'll see if that's out or in. That looks like that's out. So the lower the number, the higher up away from the earth you are and, and looking down. So let's say that's pretty good. So let's say uh, Jim Bobby's uh, 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 Golden Nuggets isn't in Portland. I want the map to center around Portland because I have a feeling that most of the people that visit Jim Bob's are from Portland probably, but it's actually in Gresham. So what we want to do is add a, a marker to the map that points at Gresham, points exactly where Jim Bob is going to be. So again, the map centered around Portland pointer in Gresham. So what we're going to do is actually create another little function in JavaScript that deals with uh, creating markers. So I'm just going to paste it in rather than bore you with the uh, writing of it all. But it makes a new variable called marker and it makes a new G marker which takes a point and a point is a Latin longitude again and adds this listener at whatever. Honestly I don't understand it all either you know but <clears throat> It works. It'll add a point there, I promise. So how you add a point, set another variable. We'll call the variable point. I'll do this after the map is called that has different Latin longitude things. And notice these numbers are different. We used, you know, I went over to this finder and I typed Gresham. And you see the point pops over there now and it has different longitude and longitude. That's how I got those. Not a big deal but there's a new point with that value and then we call that function marker create marker with a new variable that sends in that point and then we actually what we can attach to this thing the second value that it takes you see up here HTML you can literally just give it some HTML so in our case said come on down and dig some golden nuggets y'all <laughs> in a little div in there and that's what's going to pop up when we click on that uh that little marker so that's something that google maps provides pretty cool and then we add it to the map with this add overlay thing so we will save that and you can see the results of this work we'll go reload the page Again, map is centered around Portland, but now we have a little pop-up right over the top of Gresham. And if you click it, you can get our little message in there. So pretty slick. You can, and that's HTML. You can put anything you want in there. You could have an image in there, custom stuff. So pretty, pretty, pretty cool. So it's just creating some kind of simplish functions, and you can all have this stuff up for download. The only thing I'm going to remove is this because it's, it's not going to work for you anyway. So you're going to have to go get your own API key. And, and replace this if you were to download what I'm going to give you here. But these functions and stuff will work for you. So, you know, and if you want to make a new point, just make a new variable and uh, give it some new latitude and longitude and place those things in there and make new points. So kind of slick, you know, it's a little more difficult than Google search was maybe, but it's not too bad. And especially if you have some starter stuff like this to work with, you should be all right. So... Visitors to Jim Bob's or Jim Bo's will be uh, getting there in no time. Um, I should mention, though, that I feel like the, as cool as this is and as zoomy in outy fun it is, I think you should supplement these maps with a little something else. Maybe a link down here below it that, that would links out to uh, uh, the real Google Maps where they can get directions. Or I think you can even, like, actually put into locations and link to an actual direction thing in Google Maps because you know you know obviously we're not able to do that in here or maybe actually make some plain English kind of instructions on how to get there and offer that up maybe even offer a PDF download map that kind of thing if you're making a website for somebody that the map is a really important thing yeah I don't know if you should just 
throw in Google Maps and call it a day, you know. I mean, if the map is really important, having some extra options as well as some plain English kind of how do I get here kind of stuff is going to be a good idea. So don't rely on it for everything, but it certainly is a cool thing to, to throw in on a website. So thanks for listening to that. Let me know if you have any questions. You can reach me at css-tricks.com throughout the week. More tutorials, all kinds of stuff at CSS Tricks. If you have any questions on stuff, you know, definitely hop over to the forums and ask there. Sometimes I refer people there that write in to me and ask questions because the question is such so valuable. I feel like a lot of people could benefit from it. So why not post it in the forums and I can answer it there and other people can pipe in with their opinions too. It just makes it a little bit more valuable and of an experience. So, and I always like to mention our sponsor PSD to HTML. I think this is the last week for them for a while. So you know, I won't be bugging you about this again. So make sure to listen up this time. It's important. They are a, a, a service that converts your Photoshop documents into X HTML and CSS websites. You know, they have this eight hour delivery guarantee. Uh, 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 They'll do static sites for you, multiple page static sites, no problem. Each page gets discounted by 50%, but they'll also do templates for WordPress and Joomla and Drupal and KubeCart and all these things. So if, you, if you're in that bag too and Photoshop is your, and you're trying to save yourself some time, even if you know how to do this, hire them. They can do it for you. You can save some money, save yourself some time. So I know a lot of designers that choose to do it that way. So check out psd2html.com on the web for your Photoshop to XHTML and CSS website needs. Until next week, folks, I don't know if I'm going to do a little teaser. I think I might start planning these ahead a little further and giving you little teasers on what I'm going to do. Um, and the, the, I've gotten some more requests about the jQuery thing, and I really like jQuery too. So I'm going to go and throw a little teaser that I think next week, I mean, I can't give you a hard guarantee, but I think we're going to move back to that, uh, to the jQuery thing and do some more advanced stuff with that next week. So until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.